Nah, I feel like there are so many people out to buy their first base, but they need to watch this video first. Where is Scott? Scott? Scott! Ian! 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 Scott? Scott! Scott! Ian! 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 Scott! Scott! exciting to be here at PMT in front of all these bass guitars. I remember the first feeling coming into a store like this, <gasps> having all these choices, but it can be a little daunting, right? It can be super scary and really intimidating, and that is why we put this video together for you guys. And what we've done to make it really easy as well, is we've broken into three price categories, 300 and under, 500 and under, and then for you big spenders out there, 1,000 and under. Got my coffee? I've got my notes. You're good to go. And we're starting under $300. Yes. Or under 300, just to point it out there, we're in the UK right now. So these prices are in pounds, but honestly, if you look online, it's almost the same, right? $300, 300 pounds. You guys in the States are getting these for a steal. <laughs> my word, <laughs> I'm gonna move over there. Yeah, yeah. What have we got under $300? Well, we've got a few short scale options and these are really cool, especially if you're a smaller frame, like for kids, or even if you have smaller hands, but even there are plenty of like six foot tall adults that play these as well, right? This is a really lovely bass guitar made by Squire, a Jag bass, 30 inch scale. So it's a little bit shorter, a little bit easier to manage, or maybe even if you're a guitar player, right? Coming to this instrument would be a little bit easier to manage. And I just think it looks quite cool. Also, as Jim mentioned out, shout out to Jim. This is quite cool if you like flee from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you've got this big, huge humbucker pickup. What that means is this is never gonna buzz, gonna give you a big sound and just a lovely looking bass. Absolutely. And we've got another short scale one as well, haven't we? Next up, we've also got this Ibanez here, which is the Ibanez TMB30. I think, yes, of course, like this has different pickups, right? Maybe a little more tonal options, but honestly, in the beginning, I think you should get an instrument that you think looks cool, that when you walk by, you're excited to pick it up, right? Yeah. Like, so what is that? Yeah, I was gonna say for me, like as, as a beginner, if you're just starting out looking at this, <gasps> this has got all of these weird black things on. This has just got one on it. Yeah. Like just to make it super simple, these are the pickups and these pick up the sound of the strings. That's all they do. On this one, you've got, this is actually just one pickup. It's called a split because it's split, but that's one pickup there and then you've got one pickup there, okay? So we've got two pickups. On this one, we've just got one pickup on. It doesn't mean that this this bass is any worse than this. It's just this might be a little more versatile because you can get two different sounds and this is one different sound. But honestly, if I was going to choose yeah. one, what I'd, would you choose? I'd probably go with this one. <laughs> Do you know Dude, what I would choose? You get the sparkle. You get the, oh yeah, the sparkle. You get the sparkle. Shark tooth inlay. Oh. I've been this. This headstock, I love that they brought this back. This Absolutely, is yeah. an RGB 300. I mean, this to me as a kid would have been irresistible. It's like 270 quid here in the UK. It's like, it's killer, isn't it? Yeah. And we were joking earlier, like if you know, if you're, I don't know, let's say you're a young dude or a young girl and you're like into the metal and stuff and you're like, yeah, this is the bass. And they're like, ooh, this doesn't rock. If they're like super into it, this does. Yes. You know, yes. so that'll be the bass for you. If you're just starting out on bass, you'll need a bass but you'll also need an amp as well. The amp is what you plug into to hear yourself. If you, you know, that's what it sounds like acoustically, but you need to plug into something. Check this thing out, ooh! Well, you get the bass and you get an amp and you get a case as well. And just to point it out as well, we're not affiliated with any of these brands. We're not putting this video together to sort of like hoodwink anybody into buying these things. It's true. It's just, we love bass and we want you to love bass. And yeah, like th there's so much choice these days. It's really, really great. Next price bracket, okay? So the first one is the Sterling by Music Man. Oh, yeah. oh it's over here. Check Which this one is out. That? 
any of these. So this oh. red one, you choose, dude, and then we'll talk them through. So this red one, this cream one, this blue one here. These are all under 500 bucks. I'm picking up the cream one. Ooh. Right? Aesthetic. Which one grabs you? Pick that one out. But this is such a cool classic design. Who played a bass like this for oh, people that, yeah. We had Bernard Edwards from Chic. We have Flea, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, Tim, Tim Comerford. Like yeah. this is a classic bass design and you can get some great sounds out of it. Yeah. One pickup, you know, volume, tone. I've got no idea what this, this is. is. I believe What's this is active circuit. So this oh. bass actually requires a nine volt battery. But what that gives you then is an active tone circuit, meaning you can boost or cut treble and bass. Okay, next up, we've got a Squire J and a Squire P as well. So this is, and just like with the Music Man here, classic bass design, this is a classic bass design. This is just a beautiful bass. <laughs> Great color. You've got two pickups here, uh, just a volume, volume tone. So really, really simple. And this bass plays great as well. Who played a jazz bass, oh. Ian? Who, where do we even start? Getty <laughs> Lee, Jaco Pastorius, uh, Michelle and Deggio Cello. Every pop record. Larry Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Joe just, Osborne, so many great bass players. Yeah, really, really amazing basses. So we have got a P bass version of this somewhere. I think it was this one, wasn't it? Okay, so this is a P bass design. It's like an early P bass, though, like a 50s P bass. We've got a single pickup here. Um, great basses. Like Sting. Yeah, sti yeah Sting, <laughs> right. right? So if you're into the police, he played a bass like this. Well, he actually played an original 1956 or, 56 or 57 yeah. one or something like that. But they sound great. Um, and they're super simple, great workhorse. And uh, yeah, you can get great sound. Now you can get other P basses, there's an, another design. What I will show you is... The more common design, really. Like, this is the more common design, but this is a slightly more expensive bass. I'm showing you this just so you sort of like, you can see what a regular P bass looks like. This is what a regular P bass looks like. And you can get that Squire Jazz bass we showed you earlier. You can get a version of the P bass um, in that price range as well. Now, if you're thinking, great, Scott, but which shall I get? Jazz bass or P bass? Mm. What's the vibe, Ian? Well, I think a jazz bass is just a little bit more versatile. You have two pickups, right? And they're also, the necks are a little bit more slender, maybe a little bit easier to play, but the P bass is simple. It has maybe a bigger, raunchier mm. sound, a little bit like heavier low end, a little more output. And it's just a classic rock and roll vibe. We nearly forgot this man. Like, so we showed this music man earlier, this four string down here. Yeah. Um, which is like four and a half hundred quid, four and a half hundred bucks. Um, but you can also get a five string version as well. Um, this is, let me see, like 470, right? 470 pounds, so it's definitely under $500. By the way, if this looks weird, it's just because there's plastic to protect the, uh, protect the pit guard. Once you get it home, you take that plastic off. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it sure does. So you might be thinking, well, do I get a five string? What's your take on this? I, if, if people are just starting out, go for it. I think in the beginning, a four string is best because a five string, there's a lot of muting that you have to do to keep that low B string from rumbling. That said, you can do whatever you want. If you like some music that has big monster low notes in it, grab a five. I just think it's a little trickier to start on a five. I would start on a four, transition to a five. <sighs> Smelling a bit weird. I'll tell you what else is a bit weird. How many of you haven't grabbed one of our free courses here at SPL? Do you know that we have produced these amazing courses to get your fingerboard knowledge together, to get your theory knowledge together, to get your technique together? And all those courses are completely free. If you've not grabbed one yet, hit that link in the description below or I'll stick a URL here on the screen and you can go there. Now, with that said, I'm gonna go buy some milk.
with some blues vibes going on in the background, <laughs> yeah. a bit of a diminished That's cynic the classic there. music store experience. Exactly. Right? We paid him extra to come and be here just to give us the music in the background, honestly. <laughs> Final category, okay, is under a, thou under a thousand. First up, we've got a Fender PJ. Fender oh, PJ Plus. It's one of these two. Pick which color you want, Ian. Well, I love this. This reminds me of the 80s. I mean, you know, it's coming back around again, right? Look but at the color. Like storm, what oh. is this called, Jim? Like storm gray. It's called awesome, that's what it's called. <laughs> storm silver, storm something. This is such a cool instrument. In this price bracket, you get a bunch of upgrades. You get a better bridge, right? You get this like feel difference where the edges of the fingerboard are rolled. So as your hand goes over it, it feels considered. Just say rolled again. Rolled. That, that just <laughs> like nails exactly what it feels oh, like. Oh, you're just like, rolled. oh, like holding this neck feels so great. Like the fret ends feel really, like there's been a lot of work, like man hours yeah. put into this instrument. It's super cool. Right, the finish, like as Scott mentioned, the hardware gets an upgrade. You get better tuners in this price bracket. You also get, a big electronics package, which isn't necessarily better. It's just different. You get more tonal options. So you get, you know, volume, you get to blend between these pickups, you get bass and treble and mid-range, a switch that changes the sound of the electronics. And some people want those options. And if that's you and you have the cash, this could be a lifelong bass. This has got a jazz bass pickup here, J, right? Jazz bass pickup. It's got a P bass here. So people call it a P yeah. J. PJ. People are smart, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. so smart. And you know, if you're thinking like, oh, well, that might might only exist in the higher price brackets. Remember, yeah. the Squire pack has a PJ as well. So if that versatility appeals to you, you can get it in any price point. Yeah. Let's go over there. Because this is, you know, I said, I said earlier, you know, if you're looking in that price bracket, a thousand dollars, just under a thousand dollars, you know, but you're just starting out, you're a dentist, you're a doctor, but maybe you're a dentist or a doctor and you drive a Harley. Huh? Huh? Well, you're gonna want a bad boy like this. <laughs> oh yeah. Come on. So this is just look at this thing. Does this scream America to you? Epiphone, so it's an Epiphone Thunderbird. Yeah. And it feels awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're recommending this. Now here, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate for a minute. Woo! Because the problem with these, give me this thing. I don't know that I'm gonna recommend this. Because when you're starting out, you want a bass that's really nicely balanced. You know what these do? <laughs> you know what these do? <laughs> <laughs> they're called, he what they call head heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they head stock heavy, dive. Yeah, when you yeah. put them on here, they tend to fall. Now, but that's okay, maybe. Maybe you got your forearm here, you're playing, that's all right. But they're less balanced. But if this aesthetic appeals to you, if this is calling out to you, go for it. Oh. <laughs> hopefully you've enjoyed the video and hopefully we've decreased the anxiety yes. that you might have been feeling about buying a bass and increased the awesomeness yeah. of bass. And get in there, get into a music store, try it all. Yeah. Let your aesthetic lead you, play a bunch of things, and then buy the bass that you fall in love with. What did we learn? What did we learn? I think we learned that you don't have to spend a bunch of money to get a cool instrument. I mean, you said it, instruments are better now than when we were kids. Cheap instruments are <laughs> awesome yeah. now. They were not when we were younger. True. So even if you haven't got a huge budget, you can still get an amazing instrument that will do you for a long, long time. Do you know that 12% of children that are conceived in Europe are conceived in an Ikea bed. Yeah. I bought one. <laughs>